With over 10,000 pilots in our Flight Insight Instrument Ground School, we've had tons of practice test results to pour over, and we've identified the five very hardest questions on the IFR knowledge test. The majority of the questions on the test aren't a problem for most students, so if you can iron out the hardest ones, you'll give yourself a real leg up on the real thing. Watch to the end for the hardest question. Starting with number five, only 41% of test takers got this one right. We'll refer to the figure. How should the missed approach point be identified when executing the RNAV 3.6 at Adams Field? So here's the approach plate. It's an RNAV approach. The missed approach point is the runway 3.6 waypoint. On our GPS, which is required for this approach, we'll see a distance remaining to this point. When we arrive, the to from indicator on both the GPS and the VOR receiver tuned to the GPS will flip, indicating passage over the waypoint. This is where we should execute the mist. Many people will answer B when arriving at 760 on the glide path. This is a non-precision approach. Unlike a precision approach where there's a specific decision altitude where you go mist when arriving at, we're supposed to remain at or above the MDA and follow the approach path to the missed approach point and then go missed. If we go missed as soon as we arrive at 760 and begin the prescribed right climbing turn, we'll have turned early and won't have obstacle clearance guaranteed. Number four on the list is this. We'll have a look at the figure and see at what altitude and location along this Victor Airway we'd expect the navigational symbol from the HOTVOR to be unreliable. Here's the low and root chart referenced. Here's the Hot Springs VOR. And the question gives us three options. 6,000 feet at Elmo, 2,700 feet at Markey, and 3,000 feet at Apine. There are two minimum altitudes along the airway. The top is the minimum in route altitude. If we're at or above this, we're guaranteed signal coverage along the entire airway segment. The bottom, with the asterisk, is the minimum obstruction clearance altitude, where we're only guaranteed signal coverage within 22 miles of a VOR station. So at Elmo, we're at 6,000 feet. The MEA changes at this intersection. South of the intersection, it's 5,500 for northbound flights and 3,500 for southbound flights. North of Elmo, it's just 5,500. So no matter what direction we're flying, we're above the MEA at 6,000. So we should expect navigational coverage here. At 2,700 feet at Markey, we're at a point again where the minimum altitudes change. The MEA is 5,500 south of it and 3,500 to the north. We're below the MEA in both cases. However, we're 21 miles from the VOR. Signal coverage is still guaranteed within 22 miles of a VOR on an airway if we're at least as high as the MOCA. North of Markey, it's 2,700. South of it, it's just 2,600. So at our altitude of 2,700, we're just high enough to receive the signal. Finally, there's 3,000 feet at Apine. The MEA is 5,500 and MOCA is 2,600 on both sides of the fix. We're below the MEA, but above the MOCA. We're 26 miles from the station though, as this DME symbol indicates. So since we're below MEA and more than 22 miles from the VOR, we can't be sure to get signal coverage here, and so C is the correct answer. Here's number three on the list. A contact approach is an approach procedure that may be used either in lieu of a visual approach, if assigned by ATC and will facilitate the approach, or in lieu of conducting a standard instrument approach procedure. Contact approaches are not widely understood because they're not a widely used procedure. A pilot can request a contact approach, but ATC can never assign one, so this eliminates choice B. A minimum of one statute mile of visibility is required and you have to stay clear of clouds. The airport has to have a published instrument approach. It's useful in marginal conditions where the pilot's familiar with the area and can navigate visually to the airport. It's done so you don't need to do a full instrument approach, but it's not the same as a visual approach which is done in better weather. A visual approach can't be done in only one mile of visibility. You need at least three miles and cloud ceilings at least a thousand above the surface. Number two on the list, a cruise 4,000 feet clearance would mean the pilot is authorized to do what? A cruise clearance is also less well understood. It allows you to fly IFR in a block of airspace from the given altitude down to the minimum IFR altitude in the area so you can climb up to any altitude at or below 4,000 and climb and descend within that block at your discretion. You don't need to report leaving any altitude. So choice C is eliminated. 
But once you report, you can't then return to that altitude without asking ATC again. So you can leave 4000 without telling anyone if you want. And now the number one most difficult question in our IFR test bank. Only 20% got this one right. We'll refer to a figure. You've been cleared to the creek intersection via the BTG 054 degree feeder route at 7000. Approaching creek, you're cleared for the approach. Descent to procedure turn altitude may begin only once you have what? The procedure turn altitude is shown on the profile view as 5700 feet. We're at 7000 when we're cleared for the approach. Once cleared, we're okay to descend and meet any altitude restrictions when we're on a published section of the approach. We're arriving along the feeder route here, which has a minimum altitude of 5,700. Once cleared, we can go down to that altitude right away. In other words, after reading back the approach clearance. Many people say we need to wait until reaching Creek, which would be correct if we were navigating to Creek from somewhere other than this published feeder route. We'd then need to maintain 7,000. Then when passing Creek, we could descend to 5,700 for the procedure turn. But with the feeder route, we're good to go down right away. Nothing wrong with staying higher for a bit longer, but you are allowed to descend on the feeder route right away to 5700. We've heard a lot of feedback over the years from you, and based on that, we're rethinking how we do knowledge test prep. If study sessions like this are popular, we'll keep doing them and incorporate them into our full ground schools. You can make this more popular by commenting your thoughts and by liking and subscribing below. The more activity we see here, the more likely it is we'll keep doing it in the future.